Excellent. Um, so now we'll move on to Dr. Hong, again, a icon in the field of uh, plastic reconstructive surgery, really helped to define the anatomy of the skip flap, which again is uh, a workhorse flap now oftentimes for lower extremity, and now is uh, also contributing a lot to the field lymphedema, particularly in terms of imaging. So Dr. Hong. Thanks, Ed. And I want to thank Eichelplast. And, um, and I think this is a great um, section uh, for all the plastic surgeons around the world to gather knowledge. I do wish wherever you are, you're staying safe. And hopefully soon we'll be able to get together and have a real drink and a real meeting, personal level meeting. I think if we talk about imaging, I think the key to any imaging, whether you're doing lymphedema or whether you're doing flaps, is to really find that ideal vessel to work with. When we say ideal, it's not only in terms of uh, anatomy, but also in terms of um, physiology as well. So there's a lot of papers in regarding to um, lap surgery, and you can see that there's CT angios, MR angios, handheld Doppler, thermal imaging, and of course the ultrasound. And what we've done is in, in, the, um, in works, when we work with uh, free flaps, We've now used the ultrasound as our main mode to actually map out and, and actually um, learn about the physiological state of the flap. We started to ask ourselves, if we could do that with flap surgery, what can we do with lymphedema surgery? Now, if you look at the modes of the modality of the diagnostic tools that we have for lymphedema is, you know, lymphinity scan, you know, which really is the base to diagnose whether or not the patient really has lymphedema or I think a lot of people talked about the MR lymphangiogram. A lot of our speakers are using ICG as the main tool to rule out whether or not that lymphatics is functional. Um, and of course you have the classical lymphangiogram where you're injecting dye to the lymphatics, but it's really hard because you have to open and actually find the lymphatic vessel to inject the dye 100% um, into that lymphatic vessel. And we started to work with ultrasound, and I think ultrasound is really, in our hands, the main tool to figure out which is the easiest way to do lymphovenous anastomosis. Now, going back to the ultrasound, I mean, going back to the lymphinity scan, what it tells you is that whether or not there's dermal backflow and whether or not uh, there's a flow going into the lymph nodes. So when you see an uptake in the axilla, then we know that there's a good flow. Uh, when we don't see it, as this patient here in the left arm, then we know that uh, there's a lymphatic obstruction somewhere and there's not a good uh, dynamic lymphatic flow. But it's basically all the information lymphinity scan does. In our hands, we just do it and we just know whether or not this patient has real uh, lymphedema or not. And with MR, with, uh, MR lymphangiogram, what it does is it really gives you a overall good information, especially with the deeper lymphatic structure. So we actually, when we do see lymphatic vessels with this, then we know 100% there are lymphatic vessels in this patient that we could aim for. The problem here is that it really doesn't map out exactly where and how deep the lymphatic vessels are. So I think that's the limit with the, um, the MRI. Now with the ICG, it's great for stage one and some stage two, but the limit with the ICG is that uh, even though it's 100% the lymphatic is functioning, the problem is the depth of the infrared uh, pay, uh, the, the infrared um, penetration is maximum 10 millimeters. So hence for stage two late or stage three, all you see is um, stardust pattern. But how do we really know whether or not these patients don't really have lymphatics underneath that skin or underneath that subcutaneous tissue? So we decided to look into various modalities and compare the cost, uh, the imaging speed, real-time information, learning curve, whether it gives dynamic imaging, quantitative imaging, how deep can we see the lymphatics, uh, whether or not we could image the lymph nodes, whether it helps to image the vein, uh, intra, whether it helps to um, know the intra patency, and of course, overall efficacy of the treatment, whether we could use it to really see, understand the overall efficacy of the treatment. And as you can see here in these various modalities, there is no perfect a modality to, that allows to understand the whole or have information in the whole spectrum of, of the lymphedema. So 
you have to sort of uh, combine what tools you have and try to really get the maximum information prior, during, and after the operation. And as you can see here with the ultrasound, I think it sort of gives the best of possible um, information uh, regards to the information that I'm seeking in regards to doing uh, lymphedema surgery. So I'm gonna focus a lot of my talk in using the ultrasound for uh, lymphedema. I think the goal with any LDA is to reestablish a physiologic drain from the high pressure lymphatics to the low pressure vein. And of course, the contents of the components of the LDA is finding good lymphatic vessels and finding a vein, which is low pressure vein or has minimal backflow. So how do we know that? And how do we make the surgery easier? The question is, where do we find, or if we can find larger lymphatic vessels, the larger vessels they are, the easier it will be to do the anastomosis. And if the vein is closer to the lymphatics, of course, it's going to be easier to do the LVA. So what is an ideal lymphatic vessels in our hands? It's a functioning, and of course, it's the largest one you can find in the extremity. So how do we find that? And of course, we looked into the modalities of really understanding whether or not these imaging gives us the idea of ideal lymphatics. And the only imaging that really gives us that information is ICG and ultrasound. But the problem with the ICG, again, for stage two late or stage three, it doesn't penetrate. And we don't really know whether or not this patient with advanced lymphatic uh, lymphedema has lymphatics or not. So again, by using the ultrasound, the goal is to map out large lymphatics, understand where it is exactly, and finally determine whether or not that lymphatics has functionality. So using the ultrasound, we're able to identify ideal lymphatic vessels. At the same time, what we do is we map out the vein as well. And if, we're map if you map out the vein with an uh, ultrasound, you could actually see the amount of backflow, whether or not it's a backflow and how close it is um, located it in regards to the target lymphatics that you already mapped out. So what kind of ultrasound do we use? Now, we all know that low frequency means more depth. Higher the frequency means less depth. So when we say low frequency, it's less than 10 megahertz. When we say high frequency, it's 10 to 20. When we say ultra high, it's larger. It's more than 20 megahertz. So higher the frequency, better the imaging, but again, lesser the depth. So we started to use the classical ultrasound. And when we use these large ultrasounds that are low frequency, you don't really basically see any lymphatic image. If you use these probes, these hockey stick probe with about 18 to 22 megahertz, now you can start to really see lymphatic vessels. So here's a typical example of how we do the evaluation. So this is the first patient, stage one lymphedema, beautiful ICG. For these patients, you don't really need to do ultrasound at all. But if you do ultrasound, you could actually map out where the closest vein is. In these thin patients where these uh, early lymphedemas, you could actually see the vein under skin. But regardless, we, we, we see, uh, we map out the lymphatic vessels using the ICG and map out the vein as well. Patient two, advanced uh, lymphedema, stardust pattern, no ICG. And in this, in this patient, uh, we use the ultrasound to actually try to map out whether or not this patient has hidden or uh, deep, deeply located lymphatics, and the duplex tracing shows no lymphatics. And this is also correlative to MRIs. If MRI doesn't have, usually the ICG, the, uh, ICG and the ultrasound will not find any lymphatic vessels. So we only found pain. So in this case, we go ahead and do a lymph node a flaps. But look at this patient here with stage three lymphedema. Again, dermal backflow, uh, no ICG uptake. But when we do use the high frequency ultrasound, we not only see the lymphatics in the deeper part of the fat tissue, but also map out the vein as well. And look how close the vein is to that lymphatics. So we're able to now have the ability to really determine whether or not the stage three or stage two late patients do have functioning lymphatics. So that's a total game changer in our opinion. So instead of now not doing LVA for stardust pattern, now we're trying to use these 
frequency, uh, high frequency ultrasound to really map out the lymphatics. But if you do have the, the, the source to buy a ultra high frequency, then the imaging world really changes. Look at this imaging for stage two lymphedema. This is the actual lymphatic vessel. You can see how it transverses and you could actually see the valve function of the lymphatic vessels as well. Look, these are the lymphatic valves and you're able to see this kind of imaging with the ultra high frequency ultrasound and really map out whether or not that lymphatics is functioning, which is the biggest lymphatics and where is the closest vein for this patient. Now using the ultrasound, it does have a learning curve. You, you have to practice but just a little practice and then you'll be able to do it. Of course, it's user dependent. Uh, so you really have to learn from somebody who knows well to do it. But once you buy the ultrasound, you could use this until you have the ultrasound. So there's no additional cost for, um, to, to uh, map out lymphatics using the ultrasound. So I think the high and the ultra high frequency ultrasound really allows you to find functioning uh, lymphatic vessels allows you to find where is the largest lymphatic vessel and of course the one closest to that lymphatic vein and also with the minimal act flow you're able to find it and really have an accurate preoperative planning so that really helps so going back to this graph i think now when you start using these high frequency and ultra high frequency ultrasound you could actually start to see a functioning lymphatics for even stage two in stage three patients in addition to the ICD. So in regards to imaging, our uh, practical approach is if the patient has stage one or early stage, we just do ICG. Uh, or sometimes we may do ultrasound, but most of the times it's just ICG and that's enough. For advanced stage lymphedema, we get MRs, MR lymphangios, and of course we use ICG. In addition to that, uh, we use ultrasound to actually map out to see where the lymphatic vessel is. Now, if you're going to use ultrasound for early stage, that's also good because you're able to now map out the largest lymphatic vessel as well. So what meaning does this have in using these kind of more better um, high frequency and ultra high frequency ultrasound? What, how did it change my practice? So it totally changed the paradigm of how we approach uh, stage two late patients in addition to stage three patients. Now, when we look at our statistics over 300 patients, seven to 8% not able to do LVA despite positive preoperative finding using the ultrasound and MRL. It means that the, the ultrasound is so sensitive it may pick up, but the lumen is so small because of the sclerosis. And also what's really interesting is that uh, in stage three patients themselves, there's actually six to 7% that actually does not have any detectable lymphatic vessels as well. So what, in reverse, what it's saying is that more than 90% of stage three and stage two late patients, if you search it, there is functioning lymphatics. So now for most of our stage three patients, we're trying to do LVA instead of going straight to the uh, lymph node transfers. Now, this is for the lower extremity. For the upper extremity, it's a little different. We do combined for all advanced LVA and a tissue transplant as well. Uh, the post-operative uh, results actually do show that for stage three patients, there's a significant reduction uh, even after doing LVA based on finding these large and functioning lymphatics for stage three. Now, what is this also, what this is also telling me is that we need a more reliable staging system. I think, as David said, there's really no perfect staging system right now that really correlates to whether or not we could do surgery, whether or not the patient could improve. I think with these kind of better modalities, hopefully we could develop a staging system that really um, advocates or that really translates well into whether or not the patient has a surgical chance of improving is or her symptom. So we're yet uh, we're waiting to yet to see that. So again, with these imaging really helped to change the paradigm of our approach to stage three. Uh, we always find functioning LVAs, and of course the largest L, uh, lymphatic vessels to do the easiest LVA. And I think that way it becomes a much more easier surgery to do. So that's my quick approach to the current updates 
in the imaging world for lymphedema surgery. Thank you. Wonderful talk. Uh, I know you've also kind of uh, previously been able to give little workshops, which I think are really helpful. Um, we're looking into this also because um, for the audience, as Dr. Hong is stating, finding the proper lymphatic, I think certainly will impact the outcomes and you can spend a lot of time looking for a lymphatic that may not actually be very usable versus this technology will really maximize, I think, the benefits. Um, thoughts on differences in this type of imaging versus um, like most of us use endocyanin green. Do you think the, um, your results are now superior with the, uh, the ultrasound? I, I definitely think I wouldn't, I, I cannot say whether or not it's superior or not, but I could definitely say it's become easier. Finding larger lymphatics just makes it much more easier to do the anastomosis. The last time I used 12 hole for my lymphedema surgery is probably three, four years ago. We don't even use 12 holes now. We just use the regular 11 hole sutures from Ethicon. That's enough because most of our lymphatics are usually large enough, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, those are usually large enough to use um, like 11 old sutures. So I think, you know, if we're able to find these larger ones, it just makes it much more easier. Again, but for early stages, I think ICG or the ultrasound just basically gives a similar, um, um, similar findings. So it may be a duplication, but for advanced, definitely the ultrasound has really changed my practice. You know, this, this could be a game changer, I think, uh, as uh, JP mentioned. Uh, you know, I use a Hamamatsu, and the depth is 12 millimeter maximum. SPA is actually less, uh, less than that. Uh, so uh, anything below that, you really can't see it. So with ultrasound, if you can find the big lymphatics like he does, as you have shown, Ed, you know, you can't even couple it. I've done, I have... I think a couple lymphatic maybe three times, but those, you know, that's very few considering how many I've done. Most of them are do are very small. Like JP mentioned, I do use 12 all, all the time. Uh, but if I, if I didn't have to, I do think that the uh, results would, would be better. So this is uh, something that could be a game changer for us. So yeah, I'm excited to uh, learn how to do this. So I don't know how to read the ultrasound.